this is Jeff Mesnick. I'm here with the Channel Marketing Journal, and we're just left the uh, Veritech Roundtable. It was a pretty good conference. Excellent. And I'm here with Lisa Penn. Yes. She is with SAP. She's uh, Director of Global Channel Marketing. So, did you have a good time? Actually, it was very good. The one unique thing about the conference is the fact that we get to talk to our peers. So, we get to talk about the challenges that they face mm -hmm. and how they addressed it. And for a seasoned channel marketer, you're like, okay, we've seen everything. But we don't. Sometimes we're so close to the challenges and problems that we tend to overlook best practices or yep. something we've done in the past. So coming together and talking about life issues, oftentimes I walk away with brilliant ideas. Yeah. You take the time and listen, and you come up with a great solution. Excellent. And any uh, any ideas stick out that uh, you, or your favorite? Yeah, you know, one of them was leveraging an analyst report that speaks to the position of our corporation and using that as a communication vehicle for the partner community. So Magic Quadrant, for example, yep. if we're positioned, I mean, if we're right there where we need to be, then use that as a vehicle to open up the communications regarding marketing. And the partner will respond because they'll see it and they'll actually take it and deliver it to their customers. So it ends up being a win-win. We notify the partner and the partner's so proud they're going to notify their prospects and their installed base. That's awesome. That's, yeah. that's a great takeaway. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it works. So as we continue our dialogue here with the Channel Marketing Journal, which is very similar to what we do, what we did there at yes. the uh, roundtable, which was excellent. And one of the things that I like to start off with is just having people I interview share, what do they love about being a part of the channel? I, I used to be the channel. So I started out being a, a vendor and working with, or being a partner and working with the vendor. So yeah. I immediately kind of came to the table when I switched over into the vendor world, coming to the table and understanding what the, the partner challenges are. For me, they're small businesses. Right. And you know, not all of them. We've got the big, big, big guys out there, but helping a small business to better understand how they can make money um, it's a, term, a term that they say, putting you're, you're putting money in my child's bank account, right. in their university, in their college, because you're helping me to ensure that I'm making money. So for me, the small business aspect of it makes me happy. The fact that we can always encourage them with new tools and services to make it easier and more successful makes me happy. And the fact that these small businesses, they're hungry to learn what they can do better yeah. and how they can market better. So as soon as you can validate why we're telling you this and why we're doing it, then they're like, oh, got it. And uh, many of them will just adopt it and move right along. And so that's exciting. It's exciting to see the light in their eyes and say, oh, yeah, I get it now. Let me go for it. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So since you have both sides, you probably yeah. are very familiar with some of the strains and stresses and maybe some friction yeah. that could exist yeah. between the two types. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, when I came into a company that was predominantly direct and moving into indirect, the biggest challenge was helping that corporation to understand why we have to do things differently for the partner and how come what we're doing for direct doesn't work for indirect. So that, that was a huge challenge. And then the next step is the challenge that everybody faces, which is um, poaching, mm -hmm. duplication of effort, uh, conflicts, and those kinds of conflicts uh, hit the partner deep. You know, when, when a lead is taken away from them, uh, they have a really this reaction to it, you know, right. reaction yep. to it. So helping to kind of move by, move them through that is a big challenge. So that's my number one issue is poaching and or whatever the partner's working on some or another got into direct, right? right? That's the biggest issue. The way to avoid that number of different options that we have, for example, working on a third party or having a Chinese wall, something like that, yep. so we can ensure to the partner what you're doing with us is part of it. No one gets get a hold of it. Your leads will never end up on the master database. No one is going to poach your leads, and that has helped us to ensure that whatever they're doing, it is 100% protected. That's great, because in our listening to channel partners in our program, we've heard a lot of partners say their biggest concern is, well, I have deal registration systems, but what happens when I put my deal in there? I don't right. want to put my deal in there. Right. Right. And we have that problem too. And, and really the only way to address it is trust. Right. And you know, partners are like elephants. I mean, one thing happens, they remember it forever. <laughs> A new partner has visibility to something happened 10 years ago. Yes. But equally, 
do they communicate the bad stuff? They also share the good stuff. Right. So if we can have enough scenarios where that partner sees that it is their their information is confidential and they see the success and or the executives address the channel conflict in in light of in, in support of the partner, then that kind of good news travels also. So having executive management connected crap, make sure that things are consistent and that the message is strong. That's great. So really good information. So to end uh, the uh, interview here, one of the things I like to ask is if someone was about to have your job yes. at another company, yes. since you like your job in this one, love it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the one piece of advice, that you mean, one thing that you'd say you must do or you should do or something like that? You, you have to make sure that you're 100% aligned with sales. That's the key. Because there's recruitment that comes into play, there's enablement, there's support of the solution set, there's administrative. All of those things impact the partner organization, and sales has to be on board. Because the last thing you want to do is have marketing saying, hey, Mr. Partner, we've invested a million dollars in something, and we want you to go do this. And then sales is like, oh, no, no, we want you to stay over here and do this. So right. alignment with sales on recruiting the right person, don't bring the partner that has had zero experience in marketing and has no value for marketing and then turn around and tell them you have to market because their business doesn't need it. So make sure that we've got alignment on who we're marketing. Make sure we have alignment on enablement. So it's not only the sales enablement, but also we need marketing enablement. Those people need to understand how to market with SAP. And then any of the administrative stuff, mandatory. You're going to require that the partner do one, two, or three. Make sure you've got sales alignment so not only do they approve it, but they actually help to drive adoption and awareness. Because I need everybody that touches that partner, I need them to be promoting the stuff that I'm investing in, in tools and enablement and services. So that alignment helps to do that reinforcement of communicating to the partner. That's awesome. Great advice. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. This is Jeff Mesley, Channel Marketing Journal, and we're here at sunny California. Not so sunny. Not so sunny today. But yeah. uh, all good. Yeah, all good. We need the rain. Right. Thanks a lot. Bye.